so let's start this nice and easy. Uh, yes. Just state your name, tell us where we're at, what we're, what's about to happen, what we're sure. about to do. Sure. Um, my name is Faluka. We're at the Jazz Cafe right now, backstage, about to perform with the Synaptic for the first time, London debut. And uh, yeah, I'm excited, I'm lit. <laughs> How was the flight? It was pretty chill, honestly. Like it was, it passed by pretty quick. I'm used to those ten-hour rides from New York to Cairo, so New York to London was a breeze. <laughs> it was chilling. Um, so with it, let's dive, let's dive straight into it. Yeah. Um, if you had to name a child after one of your songs or projects, oh, which would it be? Um, Kaukab, I think that's a cute name. I met a dog named Kaukab, so I was like, wow, that's such a great name for a dog. Maybe a kid too. I don't, I don't know. Not interchangeable. Sorry. <laughs> Um, what's the most whack piece of feedback you never asked for? Jeez, um, I got a lot of whack feedback that I never asked for actually, but who's ever asking for this feedback? Uh, I guess primarily it'd be some shit along the lines of like, what are you doing being a woman rapping? You should be in the kitchen or some bullshit like that where it's like, where's that feedback even coming from? It's a different century, bro. Like crazy, crazy. <laughs> Um, when was the last time you pretended not to be impressed by something or someone, but actually was? <laughs> That's funny. I don't really pretend to not be impressed. I don't give a fuck about shit like that. I feel like, um, maybe, I guess I'm more hesitant if like the dude or like even a woman, like whoever it is, is like flexing a lot and they're just like, yo, check this out. This beat, this is like the best beat you're ever going to hear. You got to hop on this beat. And I'm like, it's pretty fire, but like, I'm not going to give it to them <laughs> like, like that. So yeah, when they flex. <laughs> Um, where do days feel the shortest? Mm, that's a good question. I think New York. I think New York days are just like minutes. Yeah. Um, you're quite a reader, I hear. I am. Um, what's your What's your top three recommendations? Books for people. Um, we should all be feminists. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Um, get that education. I think people should read All About Love by Bell Hooks and re understand, reprogram their brain about how to accept love, how to give love. That's what we need in this world. And um, third book, um, maybe some Haruki Murakami, Magical Realism from Japan, translated. I would read Norwegian Wood. What's the food that has to be taken away from you? Halloumi cheese, man. I'm eating it every day for every meal out here in London and I'm not complaining, but I gotta love it. But it's probably not good to have all this cheese all the time. Love it. <laughs> um, so, we were talking before, and you're not actually much of a stranger to London. Mm -hmm. um, could you ever see yourself living here? I could. I was just saying this to my friends, yo. Like, I really feel like I could see myself here more long term. Um, I love the vibe of the city. I love how uh, mosaic it is from so many different parts of the world, and different cultures, different music genres, different backgrounds. And um, yeah, I, I love a multicultural essence to a city. So, I feel like London feels very homely to me. Um, who have you last seen live? Last person I saw live, Amare. Yeah, Afro beats for the win, you know, she's fucking fire from Ghana, she's blowing it up. Saw her SOBs in New York and that was, that was a vibe. Um, if your music was an outfit, what would it look like? Oh, snap. Oh, shit. If it was an outfit, what would it look like? That's so cool. Probably, like, I like a lot of knits. So some kitschy, like, knit top on top of, like, a bandon that was, like, 80s fashion with um, retro boots and a little bit of a flare in the pants and hair half up, half down with some eyeliner. Yeah. Um... <laughs> What's a fashion trend that you repped back in the day that makes you cringe today? Damn, I used to love those tops with the with these. You see how the scarf has these little like tendrils things at the bottom? Why was I wearing shirts? I was wearing shirts with that at the hem and at the cuffs of the sleeves, everything. I was just like, loved it, loved it. Uh, I guess I thought I was an octopus or something. I don't know. <laughs> so cringe. Um, so forgive me for taking this maybe literally. Yeah. But one of your bars, you say... Was it that instant? Did you wake up? <laughs> I guess not. Yeah, I mean, we but um, it definitely feels like more of an organic thing over time. Came into this um, this art making like realm and headspace. All my life, I've been an artist. I used to think that literary arts was where I was trying to go and just like be making them books, yo, writing the books. But 
I think the literary scene, as beautiful as it is, it's just not as exciting as the music scene. And um, it took me a while to get, you know, into music like that. But now, I think, yeah. <laughs> What's the question you're sick of answering? Um, what are some issues as a woman in the industry? <laughs> I'm like, what aren't the issues, bro? Like, <laughs> there's issues all over. Like, what the hell? I'm not about to sit here and say it. Like, it's just a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of issues. <laughs> um, so this one might, we might need some delving into a little bit, yeah. a bit of story time. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about Rafael Sadiq leaning over sushi oh. to give you life advice. Oh, damn, that's so cool that you know about that. Um, I was in LA, he was friends with my cousin. She's like, yo, you want to meet Ray? I'm like, who the hell is Ray? And she's like, look him up. Yo, you just did some fire shit for some fire people. And I look up, wrote Cranes in the Sky for Solange, helped produce like her whole album, and is like just credited on so many people's amazing work. I was like, yeah, I'm trying to meet Ray. Um, We go over for sushi. He's just like dropping like bombs of advice on me like the whole evening, just being like, you know, like, you like the sashimi? I'm like, yeah, I like the sashimi. And he's just like, well, just so you know, you're supposed to do one thing a day for your craft, for your job, so that you can actually pursue this vision. And I'm like, one, yeah, one one thing a day. He's like, even if it's just that one thing. I'm like, facts, sashimi's great. Like, it was it was a lot, and it was so inspiring. But um, that's, yeah. So, um, and do you, feel, do you feel a lot of people hanging their hopes onto you? Does that weigh heavily on some days? Well, it doesn't, it's not, it's, 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 I feel it, I feel that people are, you know, like, I'm hel- I mean, mission short time, I'm helping anybody, because I'm, I mean, I can't really say that in my own words, but I do receive a lot of feedback and really, like, motivating, inspiring uh, messages from people, just being like, yo, your music got me through the pandemic, fam, or like, yo, it's so crazy to see representation like that of Arab women in music abroad, um, and even locally, so that really, really motivates me to just pop out and do more shows. I could just be a pull a Frank Ocean, be in the studio all year and come out with a fire ass record and you don't have to see me or like interact, but I love community building. I love being around the people and playing shows as much as I can. So um, the love really reaches me, I mean, good. Um, talk to me about Gertrude Stein, who is she? What significance is uh, she? Gertrude Stein is a fire pioneer, women artist, thinker, progressive, first person to make weed brownies, like just super cool. Um, feminist thinker and she's inspired a lot of my work as well like Gwendolyn Brooks and Bell Hooks and all of these amazing women that came before me um, not, not not to mention of course Lauren Hill and Erica Badu and the women in music but yeah I'm just like I feel like I, there's so much legacy to live up to in um, just powerful women that we've seen in this era and, and the last so uh, yeah they mean a lot to me what's your least favorite part about doing press Damn, fuck press. <laughs> I like it when it's like different and we're in like the green room, you know, backstage and we're having this cool chat, like that's fun. But when it's like some shit that I like really don't even, I'm not even interested in and they ask me all these things about like, just like unnecessary things about like, how is it being Egyptian? What do you mean how is it being? It just is, yo, we just are. Like, what the hell is that question? So I think, yeah, when it's stupid questions like that, I'm just like, nah, I'm not trying to do that. So dealing with that, I guess. <laughs> What's the last fruit or vegetable you tried for the first time? Um, a dragon fruit, and I liked that a lot. I was like, yo, and then they grow in so much, there's so many different sizes and different colors, and we don't have them a lot in Egypt, so that was pretty uh, fascinating. Um, you've got Cairo to yourself for 48 hours. What are you doing? Uh, to myself, no one else there? Oh my God, what? I'm dancing down Kobri Ostra Nil, blasting my music. I'm just occupying space. I'm walking with um, just a confident stature and not like looking over my shoulder and being all worried. Yo, I'm Daras just walking free. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Um, when asked previously about contrast, in the hip-hop scene between Egypt and the US, mm-hmm. you, you're quoted saying, deeper energies are universal. Speak on that. 100%. I mean, like, it's crazy to think that, like, people would be out here like, oh, New York is, like, the birthplace of hip-hop. Like, f- get out of here if you think you're going to make it anywhere else. Like, you should definitely, like, you know, push your career in New York City. And I'm like, word, that's cool. But I know people rapping everywhere in every city of the world. And, like, hip-hop has really reached that level of, of success where it's, like, a story. It's, a, it's an art of storytelling. It's a medium people feel very comfortable expressing themselves in. And it's just underpinned by so much, you know, resistance, activism, and and unity that I feel like it's definitely a deeper vibration. And I can I can tap into that energy with people who really tap into that, no matter where we are. If, uh, yeah, no political boundaries, no 
controls on that like it really is deeper than all of us what's a controversial food combination you fight people on um it's gaining more popularity but uh, but teeth watermelon with white cheese gimna beda so good i was resistant for a very long time and then i mixed them up and i was like mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> it's nice um tell me when was, the, when was the last time you took a minute to look at a painting and actually take it in. What painting was that? Um, I think I was at the Guggenheim before I left for London and I was looking at a Rothko painting and it was super simplistic, very minimalistic and I just wanted to derive any sense of meaning from it. And I guess I kind of realized that just like the painting, everything in life, you can derive whatever amount of gravity of meaning you want or you can walk away and be like, ah, a kid can do that. So it's really in your head, it's your perspective, what is of value and what isn't, but yeah. What's your favorite verse that you dropped on a feature? Um, I think probably this caught in the moment verse with Dina Anusa on her song, um, probably that, because I remember it being really cute and I was just like, I don't know, you, you can go run it up, you know? it's, <laughs> it's some cute shit. <laughs> Where's your single favorite place on earth? Mm, single favorite place on earth? is um damn there's so many places it's so hard but i think my balcony in cairo and my idea where i write a lot of my music or even think about writing my music the very birthplace of it um who takes more pride than you do in your work uh, a lot of people <laughs> i take pride but only so much like i'm not trying to be over the top of anything i mean he who knows anything knows that he knows nothing at all, right? So I feel like I'm still learning always, all the time. And when I see artists that are very like self-promoted, very um, confident, I, you know, I'm blessed, like blessed to see that, and I think it's great. But um, yeah, I think you know, balance and humility is very important in this industry and in anything you do. What's the song that represents home? Um, Bazit Khalis, Swigs, <laughs> Bazit Khalis. <laughs> Um, what do you do when you're alone in the lift? Um, what do I do? I like taking selfies with the moving background from the cars. <laughs> That's what I like to do. Um, breakfast of champions. What Oof. Okay, two sunny side eggs, um, some avocado sliced, lightly salted with Himalayan salt. I'll take my toast lightly buttered, lots of chili, some, um, I can, I would like some greens on my plate too, so some celery, if we can get some olives in there too. Breakfast is my favorite meal. I'll have breakfast all day. It doesn't you matter. thought about this. Yeah, I love breakfast. <laughs> um, what's the last physical record you bought? Last physical record was To Pimp a Butterfly for my sister's record player. She didn't have it, and I was like, what are you doing without this Kendrick record? Like, that's not okay. <laughs> so, and what's the first record you spend your own money on? Um, first record, I think, would have been No Names Mixtape. Um, at the time she was no name Gypsy also, and uh, yeah, it was band camp days, and I was like, what the hell is this no name? So she's still a very big uh, deal for me, and I'd be following her and like her news and her efforts for the community as well, and making a book club and making sure that resources are you know accessible to a broad range of people. That's really important work to me. So. What's one thing about your parents that you wish you knew more about? Um, how they navigated their youth, I think, in Egypt at the time, and why they project so much, uh, um, I guess, hostility or just a lack of understanding for the ways of my generation, and why there's just that discrepancy when, like, you know, we know that they went through things differently, and I wish they had a little bit more openness and transparency. But it's not on them, you know, it's like they grew up in a very different time where it wasn't normal or accepted to be vulnerable, to be openly talking with your kids about issues, and we're starting to see that change, so... I just I want to know more for sure. I want them to emote and to express more. For baby steps, we're getting there. <laughs> What's something you feel ripped off by? Um, freaking taxes, rent, shit like that. Where it's like, why are we paying to just exist right now? This is a lot. <laughs> I'm ripped off for the life experience. <laughs> What's texture that makes your skin crawl? Nails on a chalkboard. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Thinking about it is making me gr grossed out. Um, if you, what what do you have to say to yourself five years ago? Mm, five years ago, I'd be like, bitch, don't 
don't even stress like i'd be like you think you don't got friends but like the whole world is gonna be your friend one day and like i feel like a lot of artists you know felt like outliers when they were younger and um i did have friends i'm not gonna come out here and be like i was a loser and i was bullied and like i was bullied a lot of people were bullied when you were younger that's just what happened because kids can suck and um i just felt like yeah people didn't get me because i was too alternative or maybe too motivated to do work they used to make fun of me because i really wanted to like read and like do the extra work and stuff but i was just really interested to know more and um i would look back and be like keep fostering that keep growing there's a crowd for you there's a there's people out there who who yearn and search for that higher vibration you will find it so yeah tea or coffee and how do you take it i'll take both um i like tea in the afternoon i like coffee in the morning and both with two sugars some cream and finally yes you're speaking to Peluka 10 years from now what do you have to say to her um i think same same keep pushing on i would tell her to uh to just keep expanding keep imagining keep dreaming and and that would be that's the way to keep building yourself is you have to dream it to first step into that reality so i'm gonna keep dreaming i'm gonna keep doing it زمن بيروح وي شفتي انا نفسي عن نفسي مش قلتي كنت تمشي ما اقدرش عن نفسي مش قلتي رحتي نفسي انا نفسي اكون نفسي اكون نفسي اكون نفسي اكون نفسي 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 انا اكون نفسي فيني كلام جميل اوكل ام فودي ولكن لذيذ نفسي اسمع منك اسمي وتير كله مستني مش راكب معايا الفورميلا شوف حل تاني هنغير الجو ده لوكا وسيناتيك في السما just flow with us flow with us roll it up ماشي معايا دي وكوربا يا قصر نيل بورسعيد take it to the mother you know what I mean joy and scene london dream or I'll be post up it's a brooklyn thing